Loading. Welcome to Access the Animus. Hello everyone and welcome to a new video here on Access the Animus. The notes for the next title update for Assassin's Creed Valhalla have been released and in this video we're going to tell you all about what you can expect to see in the upcoming patch, which is going to be released tomorrow. In the video we're going to discuss the new River Raids maps update, including the locations of the maps, the new bosses and of course the equipment and weapons rewards, before moving on to discuss the runes perks update and some news about the changes made to the difficulty levels of the game. We're also going to tackle some bad news involving the access to the Ile de la Cité area of Paris in the Siege of Paris DLC and to counter that, we'll discuss some of the community designed content that is going to be added to the game starting tomorrow, including a new tattoo set and two one-handed swords. If you enjoyed the video please consider liking it, subscribing to our channel and turning the notifications on so you won't miss any of our future updates. And with that out of the way, let's have a look at all the content we're going to see in the upcoming update 1.3.1 for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So yes, the notes for the upcoming patch 1.3.1 for Valhalla have been released and through them we got to know a lot of details about what we can expect when it releases. The update will be deployed on all the platforms that support the game tomorrow, September the 7th at 2pm CEST, 8am ET or any such variation, for a size ranging between 14 and 34 gigabytes, and it will contain a lot of content, which will of course be free for all the owners of the main game. The most visible addition here will of course be the new River Raids maps that are now confirmed to take place in the rivers Urif and Burbha, now known as Barrow, which are located in Ireland and thus will have similar themes and visuals to the ones seen in the Wrath of the Druids DLC and in the River Rhine, which goes through Switzerland, Germany and the Netherlands and which will very likely have similar themes to those seen in the Siege of Paris DLC, as that area at the time belonged to the Carolingian Empire which in turn was led by Charles the Fat until his death in 888. Actually, it does seem, judging by the picture provided in the notes article, that we're going to see the part of the River Rhine that is closest to the sea, which is part of modern day Netherlands. Now, as it was rumored a few days ago, with this new version of the river raids, players will still have to go through the river maps, do a lot of raiding, work on the risk reward balance, etc. as it was for the original version of the mode, but this time, in order to get the weapons rewards, they are going to have to fight two river captains and the new bosses called Champions of Faith. The notes did not mention how many Champions of Faith will be there, but we can hope for at least one of them per river, as it is mentioned that the update will add 5 weapons, including a one-handed sword, so we can imagine that if we are going to have 5 weapons and 2 river captains, then it's very likely that the Champions of Faith are going to be 3 corresponding to the 3 remaining weapons. The River Raids update will also bring a full item set called Lu's Armor, as a reference to Lu, one of the members of the Tua de Danan pantheon of gods in the Irish mythology, who is also confirmed to be part of the Isu as Lu the Polymath. Now it's very unlikely that any of that will be referenced with this item set, but at least we have already seen the item set in action in a teaser shown on the Assassin's Creed social accounts and over the past presentations referencing this update, so we cannot know what to expect. A new update to the River Raids, which is one of the grindiest modes for Valhalla, couldn't avoid bringing more grinding of course, so now the Jumps Viking Hall will be upgradable to level 4 and 5, allowing players to hire stronger and more durable Jumps Vikings for their raids, and the same goes for the cargo capacity of the River Raids longship, which will be upgradable to level 4 and 5 as well. And of course, all of these upgrades will likely be made available through the exotic cargo that you obtained by doing the river raids themselves, so once again you're gonna do the raids to obtain the resources to unlock the side characters and cargo that will allow you to do better and more raids and so on. So yeah, get comfortable and grab some snacks as it's likely going to be a long one. 
The update will also bring three new abilities whose books of knowledge will be located specifically in the monasteries found across the New River Raids maps, so keep an eye out for them in case you find a monastery on your path even if you have completed your raid in there already. The abilities themselves will be called Spinning Harpoon, Percussion Arrow and Precision Axe Throw. Spinning Harpoon will allow Eivor to perform a spinning attack that can be combined with other Harpoon-based abilities and will cause enemies caught in the spin to be knocked back. Now I have to be honest, as soon as I read this it kinda reminded me of Link's spinning attack from the Legend of Zelda games, but what's interesting here is that it can be combined with other Harpoon based abilities, like Harpoon Impalement I would imagine, so it's going to be interesting to see how you can have these abilities work together. Percussion Arrow will allow players to hit an enemy's shield in order to create a shockwave that staggers and damages nearby enemies, which will probably be a nice way to enter a combat phase, especially if coupled with other abilities that hit multiple enemies. Lastly we have Precision Axe Throw, which will apparently consist in a presumably high damaging axe throw specifically aimed at the target's weak spot. It's not clear yet if this is an ability that can insta-kill an enemy and or will raise the nearby enemy's attention. I would imagine so, so it doesn't seem like this time we're going to get a stealth based ability. The River Raids will not be the only addition that will be provided by the new title update though. In fact the notes are mentioning some new changes to the rune perks, for better or worse, you'll decide. The first change concerns the so-called targeted rune socketing, meaning that the runes socketed in weapons and shields will now affect the weapon they will be put in only when it's used and not your character as a whole at all times, meaning that you're not going to get the perks connected to the weapon until you're going to use it, while before the patch all the perks of the equipped weapons and equipment are, or we should say were, active at all times. This will not affect all perks though, as apparently some stats and their connected perks, like assassination damage and fire damage, will stay global, but most of the remaining perks connected to the weapons will activate only when said weapons are used. This change will not be applied to the runes slotted on the armor though, meaning that the armor runes and perks will stay active at all times. The second change, which was maybe added to balance what was removed with the targeted rune socketing, is the removal of the perk cap, meaning that before the patch, stacking perks of the same type could lead to the effects reaching a certain cap and not going beyond that, while it's not going to be the case anymore after the patch. This means that, if loadout management is something you enjoy, you'll now be able to have loadouts that are heavily specialized around a specific perk like the assassination damage for example. The title update will also bring some adjustments to the difficulty settings, with a new combat difficulty added to the game called Aesir difficulty and corresponding to the nightmare one from the previous games. As we mentioned, it looks to be a combat only difficulty level, so it shouldn't impact the whole game and of course it's just an option that you can choose, it's not mandatory. According to the notes, this difficulty level will have 200% more damage received, 40% less healing coming from rations and a 38 shorter parry timing window, while keeping a standard damage inflicted by our character, so choosing this combat difficulty setting we might get some disparity with our enemies but at the same time it will provide more of a challenge. Another change that will be added to the game, and this doesn't seem to be selectable, is how much players will hear of their life bar through the use of one narration based on the chosen difficulty setting. Easy and default will have a ration fill the health bar entirely, hard will have a ration fill 80% of the life bar and very hard and nightmare slash Aesir will fill 60% of it. And lastly, for what concerns the update, there's the classic and super long list of fixes and improvements to the game and its DLCs, and we're going to have a look at one of them specifically, for reasons, while well, you can find the link to the full list of patch notes in the description. So perhaps the more relevant but also the saddest of the fixes that we could find is that the update will remove the possibility to access the Ile de la Cité area of the City of Paris in the Siege of Paris DLC, which we showed you in a video a few weeks ago. Now in that video we tried and asked if the area could be made available to everyone, 
But it's not gonna happen. So yeah, you can guess we're not really thrilled by this decision. Thus, if you haven't done it already, we suggest you take your time today to enter the area as it will not be accessible anymore, at least on consoles. Along with the title update, there will be two pieces of content designed by the community that will be made available in some shape or form, roughly at the similar time as when the update releases. The first one is made up of the tattoos designed by the community and which were part of an official contest issued a few weeks ago. It's actually going to be a full set of tattoos, each of them designed by a different member of the community. It's going to be called Odin's Blessing Tattoo Set and it will be available at 4pm CEST or 2pm UTC on the Ubisoft Connect platform. Now we have seen the presentation shot in the notes article, but apparently we have seen the tattoo set in game for a few seconds as well, as the facial tattoo was already used in the teaser for the patch itself, released last Saturday. Lastly, as you might have seen on our social media recently and around the Assassin's Creed community as well, two additional one-headed weapons will be made available in the game. Named the Astral Blade and the Valraven's Claw, these two blades have been designed by the members of the Mentors Guild and then brought to the game by the post-launch developers. Now in case you didn't know, the Mentors Guild is a community-based program managed by Ubisoft aimed at recognizing some of the members of the community and helping them creating content, and that some of the admins here at Access the Animus are even part of. So these two weapons, which as you can see are an Isu based sword and a viking like sword, will be made available to the members of the Mentors Guild at first, the Astral Blade being available shortly after September the 7th, while they will also be made available to everyone else later on in the year through the Ubisoft Connect platform. So of course you can expect some kind of showcase of the Astral Blade first here on the channel and then the Valraven's Claw, which some of us here at Access the Animals worked on directly. And that was it for today's video, are you hyped about the new title update or are you looking forward to some other content for Valhalla? And what about the new river raids, are you interested in trying them or are they a big no for you? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video.